Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Daytona International Speedway as we are getting set for Speed Week Season 13 here in the Budweiser All Pro Series as we get things underway here. We're starting things off this week with qualifying for the Daytona 500. Everybody will take their cars out do one lap of qualifying and we're gonna see who's gonna be sitting atop the pole and the second and or actually say top the front row god I can't I hate having a stroke sitting atop the front row the first car to make his way out on a cloudy Daytona race on a cloudy Daytona day is Trent Dunham driving for the now newly formed Track House Racing. Well, I can't say newly formed. It's a newly formed team out of Track House Racing as he gets the, the green flag to start his first lap. It's a new team under Track House Racing. He was racing for Chip Ganassi, but that car got bought out, or that team and car got bought out by Track House Racing, which allowed him to, re to receive a second charter. And now Trent, drive, still driving the one, is driving for Track House Racing. Coming through turns three and four here for his timed lap for Daytona 500 qualifying. Coming down to take the checkered flag here. And Trent is officially the first person to set a lap in the next-gen cars for competition-wise. He shuts the car off. Going to be coasting now as you can see where, let's see what Trent's lap time was. Obviously, he's got nobody to compare it with yet. So, Trent Dunham, first on the board. Let's go up. I think now next up will be season 11 champion Dylan Young. After Dylan Young, here come or excuse me, after Trent Dunham, here comes season 11 champion Dylan Young as he's coming to take the green flag for his timed lap around the Daytona International Speedway. in the background noise Dylan Young trying to make a fast lap around Daytona he wants to try to see that Penske racing Ford on the front row off of turn number four down the straightaway coming to get the checkered flag for his lap 
And we're going to see as he crosses the line. Shuts the car down. Shuts the car down. As he begins the coast. As you can see now here, you'll see where Dylan Young is compared to the pole sitter's time. And what position that, and what, what position, well, I don't know about the position. We'll see about that one. But as Dylan Young coasts down the back straight away, it is now time to for the next car to head on out. We're here looking at Cole Deaver now. It is Cole Deaver's turn to dry to, to take his qualifying lap as he takes the green flag. Let's see what kind of a lap time Cole Deaver can run. And then number three out of Richard Childress Racing went to victory lane in the Daytona 500 last season. Cole Deaver looking to be the only driver in Budweiser All Pro Series history to win back to back Daytona 500s. Coming to the line to get the checkered flag. We'll see what kind of lap Cole Deaver can put down. And it looks like he's jumped to the top of the board. Cole Deaver currently on the pole for the Daytona 500. First out of three cars that have gone out so far. As he coasts down the back straightaway, it's time for the next driver to come out to make their qualifying attempt. Here we are once again for the next car to go out. This is Zachary Fitzwater, who officially makes the swap from Richard Childress Racing over to Stuart Haas Racing, driving that number four gear wrench Ford Mustang. This is the guy who finished second in the Daytona 500 last year to his teammate Cole Deaver. Also in the championship as well in the playoffs, but couldn't quite make it to the to the final four as he cuts through the corner. There he is coming off of turn number four. It's looking pretty good. We're going to wait and see. Crosses the line and pole for Zachary Fitzwater. He is a full hundredth of a second faster than Cole Deaver was. Absolutely incredible. Great, great run for the four of Zachary Fitzwater as he goes down the back straightaway. It is time to, it's time for Kyle Matthews to go for his lap. In the five. And here we are. It's Kyle Matthews' turn to take to the racetrack as he's coming to get the green flag for his time lap. A little bit lower on the track than others. I think he might be trying a different strategy here. But we'll, and we'll have to wait and see if it pays out for him as he's going through turns one and two now. Kyle Matthews, oh so close. He was... A car that just needed a win to get into the chase, and he just couldn't get it done. He was so close through so long, so many different races. He had good luck. He had a lot of bad luck. And he's hoping that Season 13 will be a change. He's coming through turns three and four right now. Comes off of turn number four. Little why, but we'll see what kind of a lap he can get. Crosses the line. And it looks to be about fourth fastest. Fourth out of five cars for Kyle Matthews. 
So he might have some work to do unless some cars are slower than him, which is always possible depending on the weather and wind. As he heads down the back straightaway off the track, let's go kick it over to uh, to Dylan Poti, the newest driver out of the newly formed RFK Racing Stable. And here we are with the next driver on track. This is, this is Dylan Poteet officially making the move over from the number 12 to, for, for Penske Racing to the number 6 of RFK. And we'll see what kind of lap he can put down. Down the back straight away he goes, trying to stay right up against that double yellow line. Crossing the line, and I believe that puts him third fastest. Third fastest for Poti, getting ready for for a rookie who's running next. And here's our next driver out. This is rookie Madeline Crenshaw driving the number seven for Spire Motorsports. Takes the green flag for her first attempt. Well, I can't say first attempt, it's her only attempt at a qualifying lap here at the Daytona International Speedway. We'll see what that number seven Spire Motorsports car can do. Going through turns three and four, things seem to be going okay. Stays hooked right to the bottom of the double yellow line. And here she comes through turns during the trail. What takes a checkered flag and jumps up to the pole. Pole position so far for the seven of Madeline Crenshaw. A rookie in the Budweiser All Pro Series. She jumps up to the top of the board. And she's down the backs right away. It's time for our next driver to go out and make their attempt at a qualifying run. And we're back here. This is Anthony McCurry in the number eight for Richard Childress Racing. Anthony moves over. Him and Zachary Fitzwater have swapped places for season 13 as, as McCurry now takes over the number eight. And we'll see what kind of a lap that number eight car can get. These guys had a chance. Remember, you know how speed week is going to be here. Qualifying is going to be now. Then tomorrow will be the clash at Daytona. The, and after that will be the Budweiser Dual Races or the Camping World RV Dual Races or whatever the hell I want to call them. And then the Daytona 500 on Saturday. As we're getting ready, here he comes to the line. Let's see what kind of a lap Anthony McCurry can get as he crosses it. Pole position for Anthony McCurry. And boy, what a time that was. Absolutely incredible for Anthony McCurry as he coasts down the back straightaway. 
Up next is another rookie for the Budweiser All Pro Series. He's getting ready to take his car out. Let's go watch. And here comes out of the corner the number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet out of Hendrick Motorsports. No, this is not Jessica Shelton. This is uh, Budweiser All Pro Series rookie Joven Anderson. Joven Anderson joins the Hendrick Motorsports stable as Jessica Shelton has actually moved on to Stuart Haas Racing. She's going to drive the car that's up next to qualify. But first, we're going to see what kind of lap Joven can put down here. Now, Joven is known for some good qualifying runs and efforts here at these super speedway plate track type races. So we'll see if Joven can set a good lap here. You see him coming out of turn number four, sticking it right close to the yellow line. We'll see what kind of lap he can get. He's going to cross the line now. And it currently puts him third quickest here at Daytona. Tied for third, actually. That was a good lap. Jovan Anderson making his debut in the Budweiser All-Pro Series, driving these next-generation cars. And a third-place run in the first almost 10 cars. So as we set up next, we'll be the number 10 of Jessica Shelton as she takes her time around Daytona. Here she is now, Jessica Shelton. She is the next driver to go out onto the racing track here for her for her attempt at qualifying here. She's taking the green flag now. She's got to stay on the bottom of the racetrack. Down the back straightaway she goes. Time's not looking too good. Compared to... Compared to the other nine cars out there. Comes across the line and wow. That number 10 crew has got some work to do. That is that is the slowest of the 10 cars that have gone out onto the racetrack so far. Yeah, she's definitely got some work to do. But we'll see if they can make it happen as it's time for the next driver to come out and take their lap. Our next driver to qualify here at Daytona is the number 11 of Sam Ozkin. He was so close to getting a win in the previous season. Couldn't quite, couldn't quite get it done, but we'll see if he can do it this season in that number 11 <clears throat> for Joe Gibbs racing. Trying to see what kind of lap time he can put down. <clears throat> Going through turns three and four here. <laughs> let's see what he can do right against the yellow line his one lap of qualifying let's see where it's going to put him crossing the line now oh it looks like third quickest third quickest so far for the 11 of Sammy Oskin not bad not bad for that number 11 <laughs> Some of these drivers you'll see in the Budweiser, or excuse me, in the Clash at Daytona tomorrow. As he drifts down the back straightaway, let's go watch the next driver. And now, it's R.J. Bishop's turn. R.J. Bishop makes the move 
from RFK Racing, or what was then known as Roush Fenway Racing last season, over to the 12, replacing Dylan Pote here at Penske Racing. We'll see what kind of speed that 12 car has here. Interesting note as well that uh, <clears throat> RJ came so close to winning a 500 before. Of course, I probably got that wrong, and I think he did win, but I don't just don't remember it. Here he comes to the line. Let's see what kind of speed he has. Uh, about sixth quickest, about middle of the pack. <clears throat> About middle of the pack for the 12 of R.J. Bishop here. So, going to have to wait and see where that puts him once everybody goes out to qualify. Well, up next, returning in the 14 car, will be Allie Rain. Let's watch her attempt. Allie Rain, the next driver to come out and take their lap. Of qualifying for the Daytona 500. Here she goes down to the inside, takes the green flag. We'll see what kind of a lap she can put down. <clears throat> New look for the number 14 out of Stuart Haas Racing. New sponsorship. Same driver. I downed it back straight away. Her time's looking pretty good. It is a very overcast <coughs> skies here today at Daytona. As we all know, Florida weather, it could rain very quickly, and then this whole qualifying session could be all for naught. <coughs> but now the rain comes off of turn number four, coming down the travel. Let's see what kind of a lap time she gets. Pole position. Wow, Allie Rain. On the pole so far for the Daytona 500. Absolutely incredible run for that number 14 car. Well, up next, we've got a Rick Ware racing car. That is Charles Buxton, the father of Charlie Buxton, who almost made it into, who almost won the championship last season. So let's go watch that. Charles Buxton, the next driver to go out and run their qualifying lap. Down coming to get the green flag. His first attempt. Well, his only attempt again. I say first for some odd reason and I don't know why. Going through turns one and two now on the very bottom line. Stuart, or I said Stuart Haas. This is Rick Ware Racing. Technically, they have an alliance with uh, Stuart Haas Racing this season. So, we'll see how that goes. So, I wouldn't be surprised to see him do pretty good. Coming out of turn number four, down the front straightaway into the Troy Oval. Checkered flag. Fourth fastest for Charles Buxton. That's actually uh, not bad. And not not that and not unexpected out of that car as well. Because, like I said, with the partnership with Stuart Haas, that actually helps big time here for Rick Ware Racing. As he goes down the back straightaway, it's time for our next driver to come out and take their attempt at qualifying for the Daytona 500. Uh, up next, the number 16, Roberto Crown Jr. makes his return to the Budweiser L Pro Series. After a season off, he's coming back to drive that number 16. And we'll see what kind of a lap time he could put down.
this car took Stephen Colin to some pretty good some pretty good runs last season. Maybe I believe he had a couple of wins too, so uh or he had a win or so. So we'll see what kind of a run that Roberto Crown Jr. can get with this car. Coming out of turn number four, down to the trioval here, crosses the line, and he gets second fastest outside pole for the number 16. Really a good run for that 16 car. We should be getting into... Uh, Getting into a couple of the new drivers for this season coming up here soon. So it should be the 17 cars turn to take their time for the Daytona 500. Rookie James Moore in the 17 driving for RFK Racing this season. He's going to be taking the green flag for his lap of qualifying. Brand new driver to the Budweiser All-Pro Series. So we'll see what kind of lap this rookie can set down. Coming through turns number four. His lap time looking okay. Coming to the checkered flag. He crosses the line. And it looks to be about eighth, I believe. About mid-pack for that number 17. So a pretty stellar qualifying run. I'm sure they've got some adjustments that they that they can make and are gonna make. Try to get that car a little bit faster and ready for the dual races. Well, up next, it's time for another Joe Gibbs racing car to take their time at qualifying. Back here at Daytona, again, Jose Mills in the number 18, taking his first qualifying attempt. Rookie. We'll see what that Joe Gibbs racing Toyota can do. Seventeen cars have taken to the green flag, taken their qualifying attempt, I believe, roughly seventeen ish. Out of turn number four, here comes Jose Mills. Down to the checkered flag, crosses the line. His time puts him second quickest outside of the front row for rookie Jose Mills. Absolutely good. Good run for that number 18 Interstate Batteries Toyota. Outside the front row. We'll see if he could stay there. Up next, his teammate, the number 19, makes their qualifying run next. Colin Cropley, the next driver, out to make his qualifying attempt here. Rookie Colin Cropley has never been in the Budweiser All Pro Series, so he makes his first he makes his debut here today with his qualifying attempt. Down the back straight away he goes. His time's looking okay. Through turns 
Through turn four here off the corner. Colin Cropley going to come to the line. Let's see what kind of lap he gets. Ooh, that's about 12th fastest for that number 19 team. So they've got some work to do on that race car, trying to make it a little bit faster. Or to prepare it for the dual races and see how they do in the duels. Well, I said the next three cars were going to be Joe Gibbs cars. So we saw the 18 and the 19. Up next is the number 20. And we're going to see what kind of lap they can put down. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, with yet another rookie out of the Joe Gibbs Racing Stable. This is Reg Fogelman making his Budweiser All-Pro Series debut. We'll see what kind of a lap he can run here. <coughs> Excuse me. Reg, out of the Joe Gibbs Racing Stable. All three out of four of the Joe Gibbs Racing cars are all rookies this season. So that leaves Sam Ozkin as the only veteran driver on the in the roster. But we'll see what Reg can do here as he's coming to the line. Ah, it looks to be about 10th fastest. Uh, 10th fastest for that number 20 car. So some of these drivers have got some work to do as it's only the top two that will keep their spots. Everybody else will go into the duels and we'll set the grid that way. Well, we're going to do, we're going to watch one more car before we take a quick break. Up next, the number 21 out of the Wood Brothers Racing Stable. And we're back here. This is the 21 of Nick Gunther returning again to the 21 car this season. Takes the green flag. We're going to see what kind of run that number 21 car can get. Wood Brothers Racing has a bit of an alliance with Penske Racing. So we'll see just how the qualifying goes here. Down the back straight away. Off of turn four. Coming down to the checkered flag here. Ooh, that's actually towards the bottom of the list there. So not a lot of speed out of the 21 of Nick Gunther. So very tough break for him. He's got a lot to do. Work on that car and get it ready for the duels on Friday. So we're all right, up next, we're going to take a quick break. And then we'll be back with the number 22 as he makes their as they make their run. Welcome back here to the Daytona International Speedway. We're getting as more qualifying has taken place. Here comes the number 22. This is Henry Sanford making the move from the 37 last season to the 22 this season. That's right, Pence he switches from after the 37 shut down for this season, he switches over to Penske Racing to drive the number 22 car. We're going to see what kind of a lap he can put down here. Heading down the back straightaway. Henry Sanford's come close to a couple of wins in the previous couple of seasons, so I wouldn't put it past him to... to Probably put it put his car in victory lane at the end of the season. Coming off of turn number four, coming down to the checkered flag. 
Oh, looks to be about seventh, I think. Seventh fastest for that number 22. Not too terribly bad. We'll have to see if he can win his dual races to be able to secure the second row which for whichever dual race he's in. As we're now going to switch gears and welcome to number 23 from 23XI Racing. And here we go. Up next, it's this is an unfamiliar an unfamiliar driver in the 23. Usually we see Benjamin Miles driving the 23 for 23XI Racing, but this time moving over from Joe Gibbs, it is Nathan Ormond driving the 23. Uh Benjamin Miles is still with 23XI Racing. He has just moved over to the 45 team for this season. But Nathan Ormond on the track making a qualifying run for that team. Remember, we're still trying to beat out Ali Rain, who currently has the fastest time. <laughs> Off of turn four, down the front straightaway. Let's see what time... Nathan Ormond can put down. Oh, a second fastest. Wow, that was close. Only a couple hundredths off of. Only a couple hundredths off of the pole time. Not too bad. Not too bad at all for Nathan Ormond. Up next is going to be Seth Cole, and that's number 24 for Hendrick Motorsports. Back here again, Seth Cole out here to make his lap. Let's see what kind of a lap Seth Cole can put down. Returning to Hendrick Motorsports in that number 24, Exalta Chevrolet. We'll see what kind of run that 24 can can run here. Seth Cole, not stra no stranger to victory lane as he went to victory lane in the last half of the season at Richmond. Put that 24 in victory lane. Let's see if he wants to try to do it again in the Daytona 500. Just a reminder for those who uh, are still watching that this is qualifying pretty much for the dual races as only first place and second place keep their uh keep their respective spots coming to the line here let's see what he gets oh not bad fifth fastest for seth cole there All right, not too bad. So that's gonna have some. Uh, so that's got a pretty decent car. We'll see what he can do in his dual race whenever he gets there. But right now, we're gonna switch switch gears and get to the next car. Up next for Colleague Racing, the second car out of Colleague Racing. This is Stephen Colin. So he stayed with the team, just moved over numbers. Takes his green flag lap here. We're gonna see what kind of see what kind of lap he can run. Down the back straight away he goes. These cars get one lap of qualifying. Down the court he goes to the checkered flag here. And it's a top 10 run for Stephen Colin. Not the front row, but.
But a top 10 run should get him a good starting spot in the dual races. As he cuts the car off to coast. I believe James Qualls is up next. Getting his car ready on the track. And let's switch over to him. James Qualls, he's going to take his qualifying time for that front row motorsports entry. Let's we'll see what kind of a run that Ford can have. Down the back, straight away he goes. Inching closer and closer towards putting a lap in. Qualls actually came close to winning the 500 before, but he has yet to do it. So he is searching for his first 500 win in the Budweiser All Pro Series. Right on the line, crosses the line, and about 15th fastest for Qualls. So, I've got some work to do on that 34 machine. His teammate coming, going to come out next. As you can see, so let's we'll switch gears and watch the 38 car make his run. And here we are. Trey Wright takes his turn at making his qualifying lap for the Daytona 500. Coming to the green flag here is one lap. For one lap he gets. Through the corner he goes. Let's see what kind of a lap time Trey can get here. Trey had a heck of a time in season in season 12, the playoffs. Made it into the playoffs and then won a couple of races. Not only that, but he dominated the second round. Yeah, I mean, that was just incredible for him. Unfortunately, he was unable to make it to the final four. But we'll see what season 13 can bring him here. As he comes off of turn number four. Let's see where his qualifying attempt will put him. Crossing the line now. Tenth fastest. So not too bad for that number 38. Not too bad at all. Well, I know that there is no number 39 and 40, so I believe up next will be the number 41 car out to take his qualifying time so let's go watch and we're back here again at Daytona watching the 41 car I believe this is Jonathan Zorline ma making his return to Stuart Haas Racing driving the 41 car he's picked up a couple of wins in the couple in the previous couple of seasons here we'll see what kind of lap time he can come up with Going down through turns three and four here. We'll see what kind of a lap time he can have. His teammate at Stuart Haas in the 14 car is on the pole right now, Allie Rain. But we'll see what can happen as he's coming through the trial to take the checkered flag. About mid-pack for the 41. Not a, not a good qualifying run for them. They're going to have to rely heavily on the duels. Up next, another rookie going to take their time in for the 500 out of uh, GMS Petty Enterprises or GMS Petty Racing, Petty GMS, whatever, however you want to call it. But let's go watch them.
Bobby Fraser, rookie. Ooh, that was a loud thunderclap. To 42, getting a good, trying to get his qualifying run in right now. The rookie at a Petty GMS. The number 42 returning to the series, at least via Pe Petty. I know the 42 was there technically last year with, but uh, with Matthew Rodriguez, but out of the out of the Richard Petty stable. Across the line there. Top 10 result for the 42. Sorry, I was a little slightly distracted. It's weather approaching the area here at weather approaching the area here in Daytona. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Up next, the number 43 from Petty GMS Racing. We'll, we'll take a look at their lap. Cole Baker making his Budweiser All Pro Series debut, driving for that number 43, Richard Petty, takes the green flag for his qualifying attempt. One lap, as all these drivers have been getting. We'll see what he can do. That focus factor, number 43, Chevrolet. Cole Baker. He's been racing a lot in the online circuits. He's got a massive amount of wins there. He's one heck of a driver. But we'll see what he can do here when it comes to uh, offline racing. Comes through the corner, coming down to take the checkered flag. Ooh, 22nd quickest for the 43 team. I think they're going for possibly long run instead of a uh, fastest lap there. So we'll see what kind of adjustments they make as they head into the dual races. Well, I know I don't have a 44, so it's up, up next. I believe it's going to be Benjamin Miles in the number 45 for 23XI Racing. Let's go watch his lap. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Benjamin Miles for 23XI Racing, getting up to speed, coming to the green flag to start his lap. He switches from the 23 over to the 45 this season to make room for his teammate. We'll see what kind of a lap he can get here. As we are trying to get things ready for the sh As we are getting ready for to... Uh, set the field here not only that but right after this right after this qualifying later on tonight technically later on tonight will be the bush clash at daytona they run tonight they'll run after qualifying which will be uploaded tomorrow so keep an eye out for that as he recomes Benjamin Miles to the line, crossing the line here. About a top 20 qualifying run right there. So not too terribly bad for Benjamin Miles. Some of these some of these drivers don't even really have a qualifying setup in. It's usually just their race setup that that uh that they deal with here, and it's just to kind of get a good glimpse here. That it, it doesn't really matter where you start, it all matters where you finish. Up next, I believe, will be the 47 to take their time, so let's go watch. William Brock up next for JTG Dottery Racing, that number 47 single car team this season. And he takes the green flag to start his run. William Brock moves over from Spire Motorsports to drive this number 47 this season. 
going through turns three and four. It's quite a cloudy day here at Daytona, which is making for some okay speeds. <laughs> and, and not so much of a slick racetrack. Going through turns three and four. He tries to keep it right there at the bottom of the racetrack off of turn number four, right against the double yellow line. Here he comes off the corner down to the checkered flag. 12th fastest for William Brock. Not a bad qualifying run just outside the top 10. So he could be, he could be starting towards the front in his respective duel after the next seven cars go. We got seven cars left. Up next, Cody Lamas in the 48 car. The previous season champion gets his time to make his qualifying run. Let's go watch. Cody Lamas, the defending champion of the Budweiser All-Pro Series, takes his lap now. Out on the racetrack he goes at number 48, Ally Chevrolet out of Hendrick Motorsports. He's going to take the green flag for his one lap of qualifying. Through turns three and four, Cody had a tremendous, tremendous, well, I, 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 well, actually it wasn't all that great to be fair. It started out really, really crappy for Cody. He somehow worked his way into the top 35, into the top 25 in points, barely with a win right before the season or with the win right before the season or the playoff started and somehow snuck his way all the way through the rounds and into the championship round where he won. But Cody Lamas coming through the corner here. He's going to take the checkered flag and oof. Bottom of the lit. Well, not all the way at the bottom, but the bottom half there. He, somewhere in the 25th, around the 25th area there for Cody Lamas. Very, very bad qualifying run for him. So they've definitely got some work to do on that number 48. Meanwhile, up next, I believe, will be the number 51. That is Charlie Buxton out of Rick Ware Racing. Let's go watch his lap. Here we go. Charlie Buxton in a 51 car. We saw his dad qualify earlier. So it's his turn now to qualify for the Daytona 500. Got the green flag here. We'll see what kind of a lap this 51 car can run out of Rick Ware Racing. Got into the final four, Charlie Buxton did, and had a good run going. Uh, but his couple of bad but a bad pit strategy cost him the championship. So Charles Buxton, or excuse me, Charlie Buxton looking to turn things around. Wide shot here of the 51 car coming through turn four. Coming around. Let's see what he can get past pit road coming to the checkered flag. Ooh, top 10. I believe that is seventh or eighth quick or quickest for the 51 car. So good qualifying effort there. Not quite on the front row, but... A still a good effort, nonetheless. All right, we'll see who's next as they are out on the track already, getting ready to come to the green flag. And here we go. This Daniel Voiles driving the number 62 for Beard Motorsports. We'll see what kind of a lap Daniel can put down. He's got to do his best here for that team.
down the back straight away he goes. Beard Motorsports attempting to get to get some good run here. It's looking pretty okay. He's staying right against the bottom of the racetrack. Let's see what lap time he gets through the restart zone to the line. Oh wow, third fastest for Daniel Voiles. Very, very good for that 62 team. Not quite on the front row, just missed it by a couple hundredths of a second. But a very good run for Daniel Voiles and team. We're getting closer and closer. Up next, Matthew Rodriguez in the number 66. And we'll see what he can do. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Rod, Matthew Rodriguez, driving the 66, Timmy Hill Racing. <clears throat> that, that Ford Mustang takes the green flag for his run. We'll see what kind of <clears throat> lap he can put down. Down the back straight away he goes. Off of turn number four, down the front straight away. <coughs> Comes to the to the line, and I think I put some sixth quickest. <coughs> Excuse me. Forty-eight six six six. That ties Seth Cole's lap time. Interesting run for Matthew Rodriguez. All right, up next, we can I'm not sure exactly who it is. Let's go find out and watch them do their lap. And here we are, Christina Bell. Three cars left, including her, coming down to get the green flag. We'll see where she could qualify. She was, I believe, the pole sitter for the Daytona 500 last year. So let's see what she can get. <clears throat> Down the back straight away she goes. These cars only unloaded yesterday. No practice sessions. <clears throat> So these guys just kind of tuned up their race cars based on their previous year's setup. And we'll see what we can get here. <clears throat> Coming through the front straightaway down to the checkered flag. Oof. Mid-pack there. Probably around the their mid-20s for Christina Bell. So, a bit a bit of work they're going to need on that number 77 to get that car tuned up for the duels. And maybe even the Bush Clash to, uh, later on. Well, up next is Laura Chung in the number 78 car. So, let's go watch her do her lap. Laura Chung. Out on the racetrack, driving the number 78 Ford this year. Marcus Schuenberg not coming back to the Bud All Pro Series for this season. So Laura Chung got the 70, gets, gets to drive the 78 car. For I believe it's called Go Fast Racing. <laughs> we'll see what kind of a lap time she can put down. We've got one more car after this. That is Charles Sanford in the 99 for Trackhouse Racing. This this qualifying session starts with Trackhouse and ends with Trackhouse. <laughs> Off the corner, here she comes. 
down to the line. Oh, wow. Fifth fastest. Wow. Nice top five run there for Laura Chung. Top five for that number 78. So it wasn't quite on the front row. <clears throat> Which means Allie Rain just has to sit through one more qualifying attempt by... One more qualifying attempt before she's officially named on the pole. So we're going to go watch Charles Sanford, who's already on the racetrack. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The last car to take time for the Daytona 500. Charles Sanford. And that number 99 Chevrolet at a track house racing. We'll see what Sanford can do. Allie Rain holding her breath on pit road, hoping to nab the pole in the 500. <clears throat> Down the back straightaway. Through turns three and four, she's running. Crit, he's running a little, little right off the yellow line there, and he's going to nab it when he comes off of. Uh, Turn four here to see to the line. Charles Sanfer. A seventh quickest for Charles Sanfer. Seventh. So that means that Allie Rain and Nathan Ormond have secured the front row for the Daytona 500. Congratulations to Ali and Nathan as they will take their cars to Victory Lane for pictures and celebrations. Thank you guys so much for watching. Qualifying for the 500. We'll see you for the Bush Clash.